kids, Miss Lisa here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do today is review our memory verse, and then we're gonna have our story, all right? So let's jump right in and review our memory verse that we learned last week, ready? Let's do it with the card, okay? We'll start with the card so you have a little reminder. Here we go. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. All right, so remember where we are? We have the shepherds in the field. They see the angel, they're terrified. And the angel says to them, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. I'm gonna do it one more time, ready? But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, which will cause great joy to all people. I think you have it. It's not that hard, right? Because we're telling a story. So if you think about the story, you'll remember the verse. You want to go from the beginning? Let's see if we can say all three verses together. Here we go. This is tough. Ready? Here we go. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, which will cause great joy to all people. How'd you do? It's kind of long, but like I said, it's a story. So if you think about what we're talking about, it's pretty easy to remember, right? All right. We're going to keep practicing that every week so that you have it before we move on to the next verse. Yep, there are more verses to come. All righty. Let's see now. We're going to talk today about jealousy. So what is jealousy. Have you heard that word before? It's used sometimes. Sometimes it's used um, instead of the word jealousy, they use the word envy. Those sort of mean the same thing. So what is jealousy? Well, it's usually when you are um, so consumed with what other people have that you want what they have instead of what you have. So you're jealous of them. Now, that could be all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be like physical things, although that's generally what it is, right? So um, if somebody has a toy or a game that you don't have, it makes you feel bad and you feel jealous because you want what they have, right? But it could also be um, situations. So maybe sometimes... Um, a, a kid in school is picked to be the special assistant to the teacher. And you wanted to be the special assistant to the teacher, right? You're jealous because the other kid was picked to do it. Jealousy can be about all sorts of things. It also has some kind of weird names. So when we talk about jealousy, they sometimes call it the green-eyed monster. That's kind of weird, right? Jealousy, the green-eyed monster. I brought my green-eyed monster for you to see. That's what jealousy looks like. <laughs> That's from an old, old play. A uh, long time ago, there was a famous playwright named William Shakespeare, and he called jealousy the green-eyed monster. And for some reason... That sticks. Everybody refers to it now as the green-eyed monster. Kind of weird. Also, we sometimes say you can be green with envy. That's a phrase that's used quite a bit. And when I think of somebody or something that's green with envy, you might think of the same person. He's not really a person. He's a cartoon character that uh, you might have seen at Christmas time. Recognize the Grinch? Mm hmm. So the Grinch is a really good example 
of jealousy or being green with envy. Because remember, the Grinch lived up on top of the mountain and he was so jealous of the Who's down in Whoville and all the fun they had and all of the things they did at Christmas that he wanted to just wipe it out and stop it. So I think that the Grinch is actually a character that Dr. Seuss created. And I think Dr. Seuss made him green on purpose because he was trying to show that he was green with envy over the stuff that the Who's had. So today we're gonna talk about a story in the Bible where some people were really jealous. This story is gonna center around a man named Joseph. Now, we have a couple Josephs in the Bible, so we don't wanna be confused. We have Joseph in the New Testament, who was um, the father of Jesus, remember Mary and Joseph? That was a, in our Christmas story last week, right? But this is the Joseph from the Old Testament, all right? And Joseph from the Old Testament was from a really, really big family. And in that family, he had 11 brothers and one sister. You don't ever hear about the sister. I, I wasn't even sure, actually, if he had a sister. But it says that he had 11 brothers and one sister. That's a really big family. Do you know any families that big these days? Not me. I have two brothers. That's it. A couple of you have some brothers and sisters, but probably not 11. So um, I'm going to list for you the names of his brothers. You're not going to have to remember that, but I wanted to just say them for you because um, a lot of times people learn these names because these become, these brothers become the 12 tribes of Israel. We talked a long time ago about the 12 tribes of Israel. So I'm going to name the brothers for you because those are the tribes. Ready? Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, Naphtali, and Benjamin. That was 11. There's some crazy names in there, right? Can you imagine being named Naphtali or Gad? And then all of a sudden, there's just a regular old Dan in there. One of the names is Dan. Do you think they made fun of him because he had like a normal name and they had all those crazy names? Probably. Probably. Brothers make fun of each other all the time, right? <laughs> so those are the 11 brothers of Joseph. Now, we're going to find out how they felt about him. It wasn't good. So Joseph was the son of Jacob. And Jacob loved Joseph more than any of those brothers that I just named you. And Jacob didn't keep that a secret either. He used to say right in front of everybody that Joseph was his favorite. So the brothers knew that Joseph was the favorite. Let me ask you, is there a favorite in your family? Do you think that your mom or dad has a favorite? All of us kids think that moms and dads have a favorite, and it's usually not us, right? In my family, my older brother and I think that my mom's favorite is the, my little brother, right? We always say that, oh, Jimmy's the favorite. Mom loves him most, but she doesn't. She doesn't. She's never done anything that would make us think that she loves Jimmy more than she loves the rest of us. But you probably think so, too. You probably think that mom or dad or grandma or grandpa like your brother or sister better than you and they're the favorite. But usually parents don't have a favorite and they don't show that. But in this case, Jacob had a favorite and his favorite son was Joseph. Think if I can find a way to show you how much he loved Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, my son, 
I have to tell you, yes, yes, I have to tell you, I love you more, more than I love all 11 of your brothers. You are so wonderful and, and you're absolutely my favorite dog, a uh, son, son, my favorite son out of all of them. And to show you, do you love me? Yes, and to show you how much I love you, I'm going to give you this beautiful coat of many colors that you can wear to show how special you are to me. So you might think that Joseph would be smart enough to try and make his brothers feel better about the fact that he's so clearly the favorite of his dad, Jacob. But you know what? He didn't. Joseph actually made things worse with his brothers. His brothers were so jealous of him. And Joseph went to them one day and said, by the way, brothers, I had a dream. And in my dream, all of you bowed down to me in my dream and worshiped me. How would you feel if your brother, who you were already really jealous of, came to you and said, you know, someday you guys are all going to bow down to me and worship me, you know, because I'm pretty cool. That's basically what he said to them. Boy, did this really make his brothers angry and they really started to dislike Joseph. Now, Joseph's brothers were so jealous that when they were out in the fields watching the sheep, they hatched a plot to kill him. And when they saw Joseph coming from afar off, and they pounced on him and tore his coat of many colors off of him. And they threw him in a pit. So while Joseph was in the pit, the brothers tried to figure out a way to kill him. But Reuben, the oldest brother, said, let's not kill him right now. While the brothers were eating lunch, some travelers approached. Okay, go. So you say you have a slave to sell and he's over there in that pit? Hmm, I could use a slave. I'll take him. And they sold Joseph to the traveler who took him to Egypt. So this story has kind of a sad ending, right? This is the, a story that shows how bad jealousy can affect your relationships with your family or with your friends or, or anybody else in your life. Jealousy can really make you do some terrible things. We're going to learn some more stories about Joseph in the next couple weeks. And you'll see that in the very end, this story has a really great happy ending. But right now, we're going to stop at a point where it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to watch what jealousy does. Have you been jealous? And have you let that jealousy affect a relationship you have, either with your brother or sister, or maybe with a friend? Does, do you have a friend at school who's maybe really, really good at soccer or football or basketball or baseball, and you wish you could be that good, but, but you're just not, and it's making you really dislike him or her? That's how jealousy can sometimes affect us. So what do we do? What do we do when we feel jealous? It happens, happens to me, happens to everybody I know. Here's what we can do. We can pray, right? We can ask God to help us not to be jealous. That's the first thing we can do. But we also have another thing that we can do, a second thing, which always helps me when I feel jealous. So 
I'll give you an example. When I feel jealous because I have some friends who have beautiful houses, their houses are amazing. They're big. They have all sorts of stuff in them. And sometimes when I go to visit them, I get jealous that I don't have a house like theirs. But you know what I do? I come home to my house and I look around and I think to myself, I have a really nice house. I love my house. It's a little weird. It's kind of funky, but I love my house. So the second thing we can do is focus on what we have instead of looking at other people and seeing what we haven't, right? So if you have that friend who's really good at sports or something in school and you get a little jealous, maybe you should look at yourself and see what you're really good at. I bet you're really good at something that that other kid isn't good at at all. When you do that, it absolutely makes you feel better and feel less jealous. When I come back to my house and I see what a nice house I have here, I'm not jealous anymore. I don't need their big house. I'm happy with what I have. So we can pray to God that he would help us with our jealousy. And we can focus on what God has already given us as far as our things and our physical stuff, but also what he's given us as our talents. All right, that's our story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to learn more about Joseph in the next couple weeks. And remember some of the facts from this story because they'll be in your next review game that we'll create in a couple weeks, okay? I miss you guys so much. I really hope that you're doing well and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Bye.